PoE wire, and one of the cut wires was the PoE voltage wire. <laughs> Uh, I would also like to thank Noah for making the audio at the conference baller and overhauling our AV system. And you can thank Eugene for all the Instagrammable photos of Fred and everything else at the conference. And as he just moseyed up in the back, Brian, our volunteer coordinator, who's trying to run away now. And by the way, just as a random bit of coincidental trivia, both Eugene and Brian from Alberta, I don't know, maybe it's because Canadians are polite and we're polite too. I, don't. Um, uh, I would also like to thank all of our volunteers, uh, our various staff people, Mike Major, Shay Walters, Chuck Payne, all the rest of the people from Alan. some of the... Al <laughs> yes, Alan, Alan. Well, when you say Alan here, you've got to specify. We don't mean Alan, Alan. We mean Ghostbusters Alan who also helped out with the network a lot as well. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's loads more people I'm forgetting. Um, we are moving from catch-up mode to being ahead of the eight ball. So the dates for Self 2020 are already on the website. The room block is already on the website and available. And by the way, the only other time we've had the room block available this early the first time I checked it, I was down to less than 20 rooms, so I, I wouldn't dawdle getting your room for next year. They go really quickly. Um, also, our prospectus is up for next year, and uh, we will be at scale. We'll be back at OLF and places like that, so we'll be back in the field and ahead of the eight ball for a change. Um, the videos are coming up soon for the remote attendees who are probably hearing this way later than they want to. We hit a YouTube API limit. We turned on billing for the account and added billing information, but you have to have a human at YouTube lift the limit, which means, of course, nearly impossible. Um, so we're working on that. We've been uploading a lot of videos manually. I believe, Zach said, they're going to be uploaded in the next day or so, the ones that are missing, and within the next week, after we've gone to sleep, basically. Um, uh, so, uh, and we had a couple of people ask me about the self in your neighborhood bit, uh, particularly in Atlanta and Gainesville. Um, so if you're in those areas, feel free to email me. What I told the people who asked me in both instances was, when the case of Gainesville, talk to Gatorlug. Get Gatorlug to sponsor space at the University of Florida. That takes care of almost all the logistics problems on my end. Have AV trunk, we'll travel. Um, similar thing for Atlanta. Uh, talk to Lug at Georgia Tech. Get them to get space at Georgia Tech at Klaus or at the Georgia Tech Hotel and Convention Center. Have trunk, we'll travel. Um, uh, so um, if any of you guys have questions for the conference, so to speak, since this is like, it, I, we've never really like had an address thing. Oh, also, every year, including this one, uh, supporting attendees have beaten out our biggest sponsor. So once again, supporting attendees are the biggest sponsor of the conference. Um, so thank you all for coming. And if you have any questions for the conference, I would be happy to entertain them. Okay, so Self in Your Neighborhood is because, um, you know, we started this event because we liked OLF and we liked scale, but we didn't like having to go to a different time zone or practically to Canada to go to them. Um, so I totally get wanting to have an event like this in your backyard and not having to travel all the time for it. We are absolutely willing to do that, but we want someone local in that area to show that they have some skin in the game and they're willing to put in some effort. And so my, the very first thing I push back with is work with the local lug at the local big university to get space because they can get space at their university for virtually free. And that eliminates nearly all the logistics problems from making the event happen. Any other questions? Yes. The question was, uh, next year, could we have training for speakers? Uh, we were kind of, so the network thing pushed everything back. Like, 
we didn't even have the speaker boxes flashed until what, Friday? The intent was to have those boxes at the podium with labels and then to have a human at that trunk to make sure everything was okay before they then walked out of the room. That was the intent, but, you know, we're, we're good friends with Murphy. Not you, Murphy, the other Murphy. <laughs> Any other questions? The hotel block for next year is already open, and uh, by the time you book your room, if you do it right now, you're probably not at all the first. Uh, it gets buried pretty quickly. Oh, uh, so um, the way it works is if we, if we book out our space, the hotel will know that and add rooms transparently without me having to know them. It's, an, it's when we get close to the event that I have to stay on them to add rooms. So if you book now and you just crush us, and that's already happened, by the way. We've had to add rooms to the block on Wednesday and Thursday next year. <laughs> that's already happened. Um, that's perfectly fine. And as we run out of rooms in our block, we just keep gobbling up this hotel. So if you book it out really early, we'll just take the whole hotel. They're, they're absolutely fine with that. Um, it's, it's kind of a bell curve thing as you go, like the top of the bell curve is definitely Saturday, but it, it's definitely easy to say we're way over half the hotel on Saturday, probably more than two thirds of the hotel on Saturday, and we're probably close to or just above half on Friday as well. Uh, Sunday falls off a cliff, Thursday is the bright, but right as it starts to ramp up. Any other questions? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, we didn't plan too heavily in the east wing, which is the other wing of the hotel this year, because we wanted to get it wired up. We, uh, Zach ran fiber optic cable through the conduits between the two wings, and we rolled our own wired network in that wing as well. Um, so now that we have our, our, we have a network on top of the network here, that you know, we've we've more or less replaced the entire hotel's networking here with our own. We just pop it out of the ceiling and turn it on once a year. Um, so now that we have that room wired, that wing wired just like we have this wing, um, we have the hotel carte blanche. Uh, these are the first two years where we've had the whole hotel. So next year we also have the whole hotel. So we're good on space. Um, there is not enough air conditioning for the south in June with about, you know, with the density of humans drinking coffee that we have here. So uh, it's difficult. It's more difficult than you think to give an answer to that because when you go through our website and register to attend, you can register more than one person, and the way that's reported in the back end is just orders. Uh, it, it looks to me for all the world, and we do it by badges, it looks to me for all the world like physical attendance was roughly the same as last year, low 600s, but remote attendees is at least more than double than last year, maybe close to triple. I had people emailing me asking to get remote attendee codes for their entire IT department for training. <laughs> not a bad deal if you think about it. Five bucks for training for an entire weekend, no, it's just not a bad deal. Um, so I suspect the numbers overall are going to be up. Uh, triple digits, but a lot of that's going to be from remote attendees really ramping up. We are absolutely open to workshops. It's a, it's a thing of if you're willing to submit that content, I'll entertain it. In the past, we've had a day-long soup-to-nuts networking workshop where we go through all the layers of the stack one by one, and we give you the full... Like, and that guy, the guy who did that uh, talk for us a couple years ago, that's what he does at IBM. He, he tours within IBM and trains their own employees on networking. Um, a kid track, so yeah, like it's a case of submit the content. Like I, I haven't really aggressively looked for the content, but I wouldn't turn it away if it was submitted either. Can 
If it were possible to add more hours to the day, I would have done that long ago. <laughs> if you know Superman and you can get him to fly around the earth a couple times, I'd appreciate it. Uh, cirrhosis as a service. <laughs> the videos are going to be on YouTube and Vimeo and archive.org. I am, quite frankly, disgusted and done with YouTube as the be-all, end-all. I'm not very happy with how they run things there anymore. Yes, so like, uh, had I not been so busy, I was going to use the fat internet connection here, and I brought like my archival drives with me with all the past videos. Instead, like while he's uploading this year's, I'm going to be uploading the back catalog to Vimeo and archive.org. It's going to take a while on Vimeo because I, I, I haven't looked in a while, but I think they do have limitations on how much you can sling into Vimeo each day. But on the plus side, you don't need a human to tell you you've done too much. Oh, no. Vimeo is still alive and well. The whole reason why I said Vimeo is uh, I, I, I like watching the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. He uploads to Vimeo and YouTube. YouTube takes even him down all the time, and if he can't get someone at YouTube to straighten out, what luck do I have? Whereas Vimeo hardly ever takes his content down. Uh, we, could, we can always use more volunteers. Uh, if you go to the website, there's a form you could submit. Brian gets all the information from that form, uh, and he does email those people every year. Um, yes. The needs are yes. Even if you know nothing technical, uh, you, if you're capable of lifting and moving heavy things or having a nice, bright smile at registration to help people who are looking for some instructions and where to go, like we can use your help. Any other questions? In the back. Brian. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's the guy you want to talk to for volunteering. He's still back there. I'm glad to see you back there, Brian. Wave your hands for him, Brian. Yeah. Talk to him. Yes, uh, we do have, uh, we have the needs for, I, I, I lovingly call them gophers. Any other questions? Um, well, YadaDB was pretty much talks almost the whole time. It's just they weren't recorded because we, we were wanting to get our four trunks set and working before we expanded. Well, they were. So, like, the talks that were in YadaDB were out of the regular RFP pool. Like, yeah, so even though it wasn't streamed and recorded simply because, like, we wanted to get the four we had working properly first, everyone who was speaking in YadaDB was someone who submitted an RFP. Granted, they weren't in the guide. You can direct your complaints here for that one. That's my, that's my bad. Yeah, that, that, was, that was my bad. I had to do some last-minute, very, very last-minute removal of things from the guide and that was right up against the print deadline so I didn't have nearly as much time to proof it as I normally would. <laughs>